like this, I run with them. Yep, got you. You know what I mean. Yep. You can get them across once in a while. Well, I think, what about right dead center? Doesn't that part around it or not? You mean, well, yeah, you mean still in line with <laughs> yeah, it though. Yeah. yeah, that works too, but I find just off to the side is better. Okay. Just my experience, but it's all, all the woods different, right, Ken? But dead center, there's nothing wrong with dead center. Nothing wrong with that. No, it has to be my way, Ken. <laughs> yeah, always. Okay, friends, now when you want an easy go of things, you just break out, you break out this thing, the old gorilla. Heads up. Yeah, see, there's a crack right there. So, want me to hit that one again or are you good? No, no, it's gonna slip. Hear that noise, friends? Double bit, 30, 38 inch, 37 maybe. Right? Look at the sap pouring out of it, Ken. He is, I think, yeah. He's good, Ken. Yeah? He's very good. Okay. Couldn't be better. All right. Looks like great wood. Oh, it's lovely, Ken. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. You got a, an 18, 20 inch firebox? I think about 18. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's maybe take a look here. Shut her down for a second. Sure. Coffee break? Could do. I don't want to waste too much time coffeeing. So here we are, friends. They're all wonderful axes, and they're all for different purposes, you know. But that, that Jay Daniels axe, <laughs> yeah, nice. Working our way. Well, friends, here we are. Down at... Ken's place. That looks like a, is that a Pacific Energy? No, True North. Yeah, well, it is. It's the Junior Pacific. That's right, yeah. It looks like a nice airtight stove. <clears throat> See Ken's here. Yeah, he's, uh, Ken built this house with his bare hands. And he's jacked it up three or four times over the years. He's on a bank, friends, eh? So the timbers will get rotten and he'll jack it up and put some in. And it's been good for about 15 years. That last time you did it. Actually, 20 years. Oh, look at that car. Years it's been good. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks, Ken. Very nice. See why I'm doing this, friends? Because there's a huge crack. And there it is. Split. You know, <laughs> I like him. Taking the course because he says he's a certified risk anal analysis. Oh, okay. Well, hazard tree assessment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So I hope you've got this block for me in your will, Padley. Good. How are you gonna move it? Oh, I'll move it. Don't you worry about that. So, friends, I I, I lived here when I was a kid. Ken was. 
He's my stepdad, so this thing's been here forever, and it is a monster. And I'm going to get that in my will. He said he'd will it to me, but he ain't going nowhere soon. And he's a man of his word. He will do that. Where did you get it, Ken? Duke Point. Duke Point. Yeah, it was a uh, grandest bar tree for sorting log sorting. Really? I and love it. The bearing on it is still good. It spins like a top. I love it. Friends, there's no sense in leaving that sit there, even though it kind of looks funky. But he's got lots of privacy. I'm going to go in and nip that down with the power saw. Um, so, friends, this is, uh, this is a muffler I got from a buddy of mine, Ben. It's actually a nice muffler. He made it for a 357, I believe. But I actually changed it. Uh, I welded a three uh, a 372 um, flange on it and put and it's very nice, very nice. You'll hear it. So when I start my saws, friends, um, obviously I choke them, right? Um, I, I don't do this. I don't, I don't do this thing. That, I, I, that's, I've never done that. I'll, I'll do it if I'm just in the right position and I'll, I'll do one of those, but a cold saw, I see so many guys, they'll choke it, it'll pop, and then they'll, they won't give it any throttle or fast idle or nothing. They're yarding on it and it, they'll, they'll yard it three more times before it picks up and goes. This is what I do. Handbrake is on, so you can apply throttle and not cut whatever you're on. So friends, I'm very careful right now to not cut any foliage because that's his privacy buffer between the neighbors and that. Like I'm inches from cutting one here, so I really take my time on this. Saved it. <laughs> We're 
to say, oh, I'll show you here. These are freaking heavy. They are. Like super heavy. Right. Too heavy for an egg pipe. Look at that. Look at the size of that, eh? So, this limb, I'll, sh I'll show, well, you don't have to see. I, there was a limb yeah. that I couldn't move. It grows underground, but it, per it gives you privacy there. Yeah, yeah. And I just about, I, that's why I looked behind. Sure. Friends, I'll show you what, what, this is my thought process when you're dealing on property lines. People's privacy is huge to them. So, this limb right there was like, well, it's an inch. It's an inch away. So I had to feel my tip. See right there? That's where I left the bark. That is actually hilarious. Look at that, friends. Look, right there. I came out right there and just snuck by that limb. That was the plan right there. So that's good. That's good. Well, I think I'll rip these. I'm out and I'll just rip these. I'm done splitting. I'll just rip these so that he can get at them. Okay, friends, we're going to count the rings of this tree. It was 120 foot, probably. Um, I'm gonna give you a count here. It was tight when it was young. Very tight growth here. So let, let's just do this. Yeah, right there. Maybe 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh yeah, the growth rings are super wide. The tree's not even a hundred years old, friends, which is surprising to me, actually. tough okay yeah. you got some nice dog bedding there How's your dog here? she's crazy she's absolutely crazy but Wendy was saying she won't go anywhere until the dog passes <laughs> yeah it's nuts so friends, it's threatening to snow and uh, he done a nice job for you. Uh, Matt, if you're watching this, uh, Matt Summit Tree Works, Hogan worked for him. 
Uh, I referred Matt down here. I couldn't get to Ken, or he couldn't wait for me. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he waited, and yeah. Anyways, I was probably doing a video chopping wood somewhere in the bush, or chopping a tree down with an axe, doing a video. Uh, so I sent Matt in, and Matt did a great job. Matt, thanks for looking after my old buddy, my stepdad, Ken, my friend. He's been here. How long have you lived here, Ken? Come on. 52 years. 52 years. Yeah. Well, I'm 53, so. Yeah. So you came when you were five, I think. Yeah. Five or six. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's that. This will help Ken out. Absolutely. He can get out his seasoning game on here. Because you got, what do you got out the back, Ken? Three chords or something out the back? More. No, three chords right now. Yeah, He's good. Me through this year. Good. Okay. Okay, friends. Make sure you say hi to Ken. Okay, Ken. We'll see ya. All right. Good morning, friends. I just wanted to finish up that video with Ken just to to show folks what we we done for him. We looks like we got some crusty crusty old tree guy showing up here again. We're, uh, we're going cutting. We'll have some cutting footage for you. I put that muffler on of uh, Morgan's, and it was uh, it was okay. I, I can see a couple of areas where it needs refinements, um, and I think it it will help. But um, yeah, it's it's nice weather for working, actually, friends. To be honest with you, it's the first time I ever put a stand field on someone was, was cold like yesterday. Nick's boots, I gotta, I gotta tell you, Nick's again, thank you. Uh, they're they're doing the job. Um, I'm gonna mail off an old set that we've been uh, looking at, maybe doing a doing something special with. Uh, Nick's has been been good working with me on my stuff that I like, so I appreciate you guys again, Nick's boots. Thanks a lot. Uh, loving my boots. Hogan's loving his. We've been rocking them steady. So, anyway, friends, we're we're heading back to work here today. We got some footage with uh, Ian and, and Hogan, which is nice to work with Ian and Hogan again. And uh, spent some time over at Morgan's place building mufflers, and we had a blast there. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. In two days, I jump on an airplane and I go to freaking uh, Durham or some. I forget the name of the city, but we're going to we're going to see Clay Walker and his and his band. Uh, live, he invited yeah. us, and he's going to fly me and my wife down. What a wonderful thing to do! So we're excited about that. So, friends, uh, Ian is here with us today. We're working again. I went and worked with Ian and Hogan yesterday. It was fun. It's a few more trees to take down, but uh, morning, Ian. Morning. Good to see you. Um, so, friends, I, I, again, th this is um, this is what it was back in the day. This is a company called uh, Paris Boots, which is Pierre Paris, or per Pierre Paris. But I mean, this is this is what it was, friends. This is Ian. Ian uh, was working for a, a, a fella, and uh, this is what Bear Claw would wear, and a lot of the guys would wear. Friends, I, I'm not joking you. These are. These are some of the finest boots that were actually around and available in these parts. And I'm telling you something, friends. Ian, these are outrageous. Sorry? These are outrageous. Yeah, they're nice shape. They're like brand new. They only worn for a week. Oh, man. They're just... But again, you, you see, friends, it's, it's, it's the nail down. It's not, not the stitch out. These aren't... And this is how boots were made. And I'm, I'm telling you, friends, like you can see the, see the, see right there. I, I, this is all I've ever worn. This is, this is the only style of boot I've ever worn. Look at these. I'm telling you, friends, see, see, see here too. Like, you see how the, see how the, how the different, like these are just, God, they're gorgeous. They, they really are, friends. The, these boots are incredible. And I, I never, my, my feet didn't get wet in these boots. I hear people talking about this, you know, this, uh, well, it's better. It's the stitch out is better because of this or it's not my experience. I would tell you if it was, it, it has not been 
My experience has been those, that style of boot, and I know it's probably easier to make and less leather and less nails and easier on the cobblers and the boot makers hands, no doubt. And you can probably make more boots in a day than you can nail down doing a stitch out, guaranteed. So, but all this stuff about, oh, it's better this, better that, I, I don't agree with it. I, I just don't, I, that's, that's me, it's not my experience. Uh, and I hit the bottom of the branch, and I hit the top of the branch. Gosh, it's a branch off. Look at Paris. They they are glorious boots. Look at that, no speed lacing, just old school, straight up old school. I have a set of these actually, but they're in uh, they're in an older older boot. But I'll tell you, Nick's boots, you guys. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the scene. You've, you've helped me out so much. Nix is, is on the scene and uh, they're, they're willing to work with me on, on the boot thing. And, and I just think it's incredible. He, he got these given to him. He was doing a tree job somewhere and a guy came out and said, hey, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need these anymore. They're, and they're a size. Can you believe that? Beautiful. So that's the way they built boots. That's how they built boots here. They didn't, they didn't do a stitch out here. We just didn't have that here. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing. So friends, if you know me and you, you hear me and talk about these types of things, this is my world, okay? This, this is, has been my world. I'm, I've got, so, <sighs> this is what was here. This is a login boot, okay? Not this. I've never experienced this until until uh, the internet, and uh, my boots broke down, and Viberg stopped making them. So thank goodness for Nicks. Like like seriously, thank goodness because Nicks are the closest thing that, and they're making me another set right now, friends. Nicks is. They're making me another set with a Celastic toe and we're getting down to business now. Nick understands my needs more now than, than they did when they first reached out to me or I, however we hooked up, I forget how it happened. I think it was just through Instagram, but regardless, we're, we're doing some things. I mean, but you, you see what I'm saying? It, it's, remember these are corks though, right? But if anybody's wondering what I'm talking about, this is what I'm talking about. This is a stitch out construction. The leather comes over and comes out and they stitch it down. And I don't, I, I don't get on board with the, this is better than this. That, that, who, who knows that? Who, who knows that? What, just because you think something's gonna get in there? Well, it's it's not my experience, friends. It's just not my experience. These are these are things that a lot of people don't they don't they don't know because they haven't been in boots for 20, 30, 40 years. They they just look at the boot and they go, oh, it looks good, and I'll take that, and then they experience it. Well, I've experienced both now. I don't have anything against this really. Not now. I haven't been in them long enough. I've only wore this style of boot for short order. I've had these on my feet for 25 years. So you can imagine what it was like for me to go from this contoured uh, logging boot to this, to this. And Nyx does a great job of a stitch down. I mean, their stitch down's tight. They do, they do a great job. So I kind of feel sorry for Nyx because I'm so finicky when it comes to stuff like this but I need good work boots. I'm far from cotton, done from cotton. I need a good set of, I mean, I got a set of corks. I, I'm, I'm all right there. But I, I'm on a journey to understand why. Why did they go to the stitch down instead of the, and it seems to me that it was just easier on people's hands and, and you could make more stitch down boots than you could the nail down. But as far as them being better, how, who knows that? Who knows that is the people who make the boots because it's easier to make the stitch down. That's just my opinion. 
Bearclaw told me he had a set of these Paris on. He bought them brand new, didn't oil them, didn't nothing, and walked through creeks and came home with dry feet. Aren't those beautiful, friends? Anyway, that's my spiel for the boots. I'm a boot guy. Uh, but I come from a place of not just having endless amounts of money and buying boots and putting them on shelves and going, yes, that's lovely, those are my boots. I come from them being on my feet. That's where, I, that's where I, my speak comes from. My speech comes from wearing them and working in them, not from collecting them. So I'm, I'm really enjoying the Knicks boots right now, super enjoying them. And I've broken them in and I wore them all day yesterday in the freezing cold. I, I don't like the wool socks, friends. I'll just be honest, I, I, I'm not a wool sock guy. I got rid of wool years ago. And I've moved to cotton because your, your feet stay tighter in the boot. They don't move around. Wool, wool, especially that merino wool because it's fine. And you see it slips around a little bit and moves around in the boot. Uh, I'm not just standing in one place. I'm moving and grooving. So I like the cotton and I'll be staying with cotton. But uh, just a little boot jargon for you at the end of the video. Hope you're all doing well. Love you all dearly. Welcome to the new subscribers. Work hard, be honest, and be kind. See you on the next one. So I find that odd that, you know, and these are the old school corks, friends. Look, look at this. See this? Look at that. Look at the, look at the design of these boots. This is where I come from. Over and out. See you on the next one.